Hi guys, it is an absolutely gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise. We have made it to Tuesday, January 13th, 2015, and you're all wacky conspiracy theorists. It's too sick to come up with a weekly wacky conspiracy rant, but while I was digging around for that story, I just stumbled onto this story, and uh, just reminded me of a story from my own life. So if anyone just wants to hear about how Hambone Littletail uh, got divorced, this story uh, reminded me of that story. And I don't think I've ever told the story of uh, how I got divorced. So anyway, let me read this story from the top 100 stories on the planet, according to Yahoo News. Man accused of beating child for taking last piece of cheesecake. A Memphis man has been charged with severely beating his child for reportedly eating the last piece of cheesecake. The boy, who is three years old, was in critical condition at last report and uh, don't don't worry guys I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be so callous that I'm gonna make a, 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 a joke out of this tragedy uh, but see see how much trouble this gets me in on, on, on I, I am in absolutely no way defending this ogre for beating his three-year-old son for eating his last piece of cheesecake. But you know, guys, on one level, I can empathize with the man. Uh, you know, when, when you got your mouth set on something, uh, cheesecake, ham sandwich, whatever, and you find the last piece of cheesecake has been eaten, you, you, you just... You, you, you are rendered temporarily insane. I mean, I'm sure I would vote to convict this asshole, but uh, I, I, would, I would be somewhat torn uh, if I was on a jury uh, of his peers, knowing the pain of, of having the last piece of cheesecake eaten. But anyway, what the story reminded me of is a story that I that I mean to tell every October 11th, which is the day. Although it was October 11th, 1990, is the day that my seven-year marriage came crashing to an end over a ham sandwich. In this case, it wasn't a piece of cheesecake, although it, although it would have been. Uh, it just happened to be a ham sandwich instead of a piece of cheesecake. Uh, the story was this. My dear sweet ex-wife and I, we uh, had both left successful careers in Santa Cruz. I was uh, Santa Cruz, California after the big earthquake and uh, from October of 1989 I was a real estate agent for Century 21, and she was a speech pathologist, you know. We were the quintessential little Reagan-era yuppies enjoying the largesse of the Republican Party uh, in the year of 1989 when this earthquake struck and completely destroyed my real estate career in a period of 17 seconds. I lost $17,000 in 17 seconds. And so anyway, it took us a while. We decided we were done with California and we had moved to Sweet Home, Oregon. This little redneck lumber town uh, in Oregon is, uh, where we decided that the marriage was already not in good shape. So we thought that we were going to save our marriage 
and start a new life in Sweet Home, Oregon. So we went up, we went up there and found a little, uh, little farm. Well, this beautiful old farmhouse on 13 acres in the bucolic setting of of Western Oregon, actually nine miles outside the uh, the, the city limits of uh, of Sweet Home. I remember uh, we were waiting for a CD to mature. We, we were paying seventy eight thousand dollars for this house, and this was back in the days when CDs were paying like nine percent. So the CD. Uh, was to mature on October 10th, 1990. We were $78,000. CD was going to mature, and I was just going to write a check. Uh, it was actually a $112,000 CD that was going to mature on October 10th, and I was just going to write this fellow a $78,000 check uh, on. Thursday evening. I was going to hand him the check and I remember calling the guy and reminding him and uh, here's what he told me. He said, you know, I need to run down to LA for the weekend so just bring me the $78,000 on Monday. This is what the man told me. Uh, probably on about October 8th or October 9th this poor man is probably still regretting this gaffe. This is just a note to self and anyone listening to this. If somebody ever calls you and says, I am going to meet you Thursday night and bring you a check for $78,000, what you do is tell them, I will see you there. I don't give a shit what your plans are. You meet the person and pick up the check. So anyway, he did not get his $78,000 on Thursday night because he was expecting it on Monday. So Friday morning, October 11th, 1990, I get up now with uh, my dear sweet wife and I had $112,000 liquid in the bank. And uh, probably should have put us in a better mood. So uh, I start the day. I had a lot to do that day. I had to go into the big city of Albany, Oregon, get up at the crack of dawn and run all these errands. I was actually taking classes at the little university there in uh, Albany. So I got, it was about noon when I arrived home and I was starving. And there was my dear sweet ex-wife who was four foot ten and weighed 88 pounds, by the way. Uh, and she had been spending her morning dealing with these, our, our dog, our Springer Spaniel, had had 11 puppies. So she had been dealing with these 11 little puppies, uh, doing what 11 puppies do uh, in, inside your house, you can imagine. so. Her nerves were kind of shot. My nerves were completely shot. We were both hungry, low blood sugar. So I go in and decide to make myself a ham and cheese sandwich. This was my goal, to grill myself a ham and cheese sandwich. So I go in the kitchen. I break out the bread and the butter and the cheese and the last piece of ham. There's plenty of bread, plenty of butter, plenty of cheese, but there is one piece of ham left in the refrigerator. So I proceed to make, to get the last piece of ham and make myself a grilled ham and cheese sandwich. And so my dear sweet ex-wife comes in there and says, could you make me a ham and cheese sandwich? And I looked at her and I said, darling, I said, I will be glad to make you a grilled cheese sandwich. However, there is only one piece of ham left and I claim 
the last piece of ham on ham bone put his claim on the last piece of ham and uh, that was it guys that was it that was the last challenge that I issued in my seven-year marriage and when I announced my uh, intention of of uh, claiming the last piece of ham she goes <coughs> she gets right up in my face you know as I say she's four foot ten Heil Hitler Heil Hitler Heil Hitler and, and, and I said darling I am not in the mood for it I said I will be glad to make you a grilled cheese sandwich but I am taking the last piece of ham. I mean, so, you know, it was like this, guys. Even with the full last piece of ham, there was barely enough ham to make one, one, half, one halfway decent ham and cheese sandwich. If, if we had split the piece of ham, there would not have been enough ham to do either one of us any good. The other choice would have been to take an 18 mile round trip to the grocery store to buy more ham. And of course, I had just gotten back from town. I had just been there. Uh, if I had known we were out of ham, I would have picked up some goddamn ham. And this wouldn't have been a problem. And I would have made her the goddamn ham and cheese sandwich. But as it was, I wasn't gonna part with that last piece of ham. And uh, so she's in my in my face. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! And uh, I warned her one more time, darling. I've got no more patience with this. I'm hungry. I'm tired. I'm gonna sit down and enjoy my sandwich. Do you or do you not want a grilled cheese sandwich? Last offer. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! So my response to that was, darling, take the fucking last piece of ham. And as far as I know, uh, my dear sweet ex-wife enjoyed every bite of that ham and cheese sandwich by herself as I was hopping in the car, driving to the bank, taking $56,000 in cash out of the bank. And I headed to Costa Rica is where I ended up. Uh, she was supposed to be going to Costa Rica. We actually had these two tickets to Costa Rica. Uh, I went on to Costa Rica by myself uh, without her. I sold her ticket uh, to a buddy of mine. And uh, I can only imagine what that man thought when he got back from L.A. and called to pick up his check for $78,000 on Monday morning because when I got back from Costa Rica four months later, I noticed the for sale sign still sitting in front of that empty farmhouse in Sweet Home, Oregon. And that is my ham sandwich story. That's my story and I'm sticking to it, but my buddy says we got to get down to Goodwill before they close. So I got to get. Bye, guys.